Let's take a look at another transmission coefficient for a different scenario. This scenario we have our potential function sits between minus a and positive a and it's between negative a and positive a our potential function is positive v naught so positive v naught and everywhere else it's zero so our job is to find the transmission coefficient if the energy is greater than v naught so that's the first scenario where e is greater than v naught the second scenario is when e is uh, equal to v naught and the third scenario is when e is less than v naught the first scenario we solved in the previous video video number 24 so this is done uh, and then now we're gonna take a look at the third scenario is when e is less than v naught so here when e is less than v naught and let's say that the wave is coming from this direction so this is the wave coming from this direction or the particle whatever you want to look at it so now let's look at the three regions so this is region number one region number two and region number three and look, let's look at the solution for the Schrodinger equation in these regions so we know what this, the solution looks like so we have psi of x is equal to for the first region this is when x is less than minus a we have the incident wave a times e to the i k x notice that the solution is complex plus the reflected wave which is b times e to the minus i k x and in the second in the second region region number two the solution is c times e to the uh, l x plus d times e to the minus l x this is x between minus a and positive a and finally the third uh, region this is the transmitted wave f times e to the i k x all right so this is when x is greater than positive a let's remind ourselves of what's k we defined it k as the square root of 2m times the energy e divided by h bar and let's remind ourselves of l l is equal to the square root of 2 oops 2m times v naught minus e divided by h bar okay so now let's look at boundary conditions we have four boundary conditions one two of them at minus a and two of them at positive a so this boundary condition gives us a times e to the minus i k a plus b times e to the positive i k a is equal to c times e to the negative l times a plus d times e to the positive l times a psi prime is also continuous at minus a so this is the continuity of psi prime at minus a this gives us the derivative the first derivative of this guy which is after I'm gonna do some simplifications here okay so let's say this is gonna be equal to 2 times a to the times e to the minus i k a is equal to 1 minus i times l divided by k 
this is times c to the i mean e c times e to the i l a i mean minus l a plus one plus i times l divided by k times d e to the l times a did i get this right yes okay so that's good so now let's look at the third boundary condition. This is the continuity of psi at positive a. This gives us that c times e to the l a plus d times e to the minus l a. This is equals to f times e to the i k a. Also psi prime is also continuous at positive a so that's the fourth boundary condition this gives us l times c e to the l k l a plus d times e to the minus l a this should be equal to i times k times f times e to the i k a all right so now let's add equation number three plus equation number four and also let's do let's do this first so adding equation number three with number four we get two times c e to the l times a equals to one plus i l divided by k times e to the times f of course e to the i k a and if we uh, if we subtract equation number four from equation number three this we eliminate the c's and we add the d's we get we get uh, two times d e to the minus l k a equals to 1 minus i times k divided by l times of course f e to the i k a i'm sorry this should be swapped so this is this is wrong here so this is k divided by l and i believe this is the derivative so we have a minus here so this also should be a negative this is just a typo all right so let's call this equation number five and let's call this equation number six so let's use these two equations five and six and plug them into equation number one if you want to take a look at equation number one uh, Let's plug them into equation number two, this equation here. Two times a times e to the minus i k a equals to one minus i l over k times one plus i times k over l times f e to the i k a times e to the minus 2 times l times a divided by 2 plus 1 plus i times l divided by k this is the d, the d part, right? Times 1 minus i times k divided by l times f e to the i k a times e to the 2 l a over 2. Let's simplify a little bit further. So we get f times 
sometimes e after some algebra i recommend you go do this algebra by yourself times a divided by 2 times 2 times e to the minus 2 l a plus e to the 2 l a this should look 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 familiar right plus i times l square minus k square divided by l times k times e to the 2 l a minus e to the minus 2 l a hyperbolic sine or sinh sinh of x is equal to e to the x minus e to the minus x divided by 2 also cosh of x is equal to the e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by 2 so we're going to use these two to simplify a little bit further so this is 2 times a e to the minus i k times a so this is going to be equal to f times e to the i k a divided by 2 times 4 cosh of 2 l a plus i times l square minus k square divided by l times k times 2 times the sinh of 2 k a I'm sorry L times 2 times L times a all right so let's simplify a little bit further so this is also equal to 2 times F times e to the i k a times cosh of 2 l a plus i to the i times l square minus k square divided by 2 times l times k times the sinh of 2 l a the inverse to be equal to the probability of the incident wave a to be transmitted divided by that probability of the transmitted wave this is the same as a over f magnitude square I also want to remind you of some trig identity that cosh square is equal to 1 plus sinh square. We're going to use that. Alright, so now this is here t inverse is equal to cosh square of 2ka2 two two la. plus L square minus K square square divided by 2 L times K times sinh this is also square times sinh square of 2ka using this trig identity here we get the transmission coefficient equals to 
1 plus 1 plus k I mean L square minus k square divided by 2 L k that's being squared and that's also being squared times cinch square of 2 2 L A which is also equal to let's say uh, let's take a look at this piece here the piece in the bracket let's do this in yellow so the, this piece in the bracket this is the same as if we want to expand it let's go ahead and expand that so we have 4 L, L, to L square K square plus K to the fourth plus L to the fourth minus 2 times L square times K square divided by 2 times L times K that's square so plugging back the values for K and L we get 2 times M times E divided by h bar square plus 2 times m times v naught minus e divided by h bar square so this is here this whole quantity is being squared divided by 4 times 2 times m times e divided by h bar square that's the k square right and this is the l square 2 times m times v naught minus e divided by h bar square that's also multiplication here all right so simplifying this after a lot of algebra we get v naught divided by 4 times e times v naught minus e if you remember this is the term in the bracket so plugging this back into the equation we get the transmission coefficient t inverse equals to 1 plus v naught square divided by 4 times e times v naught minus e times cinch square of 2a divided by h bar this is the l right times 2 times m times v naught minus e And there you have it this is the transmission coefficient for the first scenario this is when e is less than v naught so now let's take a look at the second scenario this is when e is equal to v naught here the solution for the wave function yeah let's do it here psi of x is equal to for the first region, we have a complex solution, A times E to the I, K, X, K is still the same, plus B times E to the minus I, K, X, this is X less than minus A. For the second region, the solution C plus D 
x. This is x between minus a and positive a. Think about that. Think about this here. So, and for the third region, f times e to the also complex i k x. This is x is greater than a. Well, for the second region, if you if you look here, this is our potential v naught. So this is equal to. If you look at the Schrodinger equation, you will find that the second derivative of psi has to be equal to zero. Think in terms of what do you want to set your L equals to, or your K, okay? So, all right, so now let's look at the four boundary conditions. The first boundary condition is the continuity. of psi at minus a this gives us the first equation which is a times e to the minus i k a plus b times e to the positive i k a equals to c plus d a this is equation number one. Equation number two comes from the continuity of psi prime at minus a i k times a e to the minus i k a mm -hmm. minus b times e to the i k a equals d right the third equation comes from the continuity of psi at positive a this gives us f times e to the i k a equals to c plus d a and equation number four is the continuity of psi prime at positive a this gives us i times k times f times e to the i k a equals to D. All right, so now our job is to solve these equations. So the first thing is we're going to add two equations. Let's add equation number. Yeah. Let's add equation number one and one and three. So this gives us two times D times A, right? Mm -hmm. Equals to F times e to the i k a minus a e to the i k a minus b times e to the i k a Let's call this equation number
And after some work, we get to the equation number six after uh, using equation number one and two, we get a times e to the, um, what is it? Minus two i k a minus b equals f. So let's call this equation number six. So we're gonna use equation number so we're going to use equation number 4 to eliminate D in equation number 5. So use 4 to eliminate D in 5. We get A times E to the minus 2i k a plus b equals f minus 2 a i k f which is equal to 1 minus 2 i a k times f. So let's call this equation number 7. So now let's take equation number 7 and add it to equation number 6. What do we get? We get 2 times a times e to the minus 2 i k a equals 2 times f times 1 minus i k a all right so finally now the transmission coefficients t inverse is equal to a divided by f magnitude squared right which is equal to 1 plus k a square putting it back into the original form in terms of e and v naught we get 1 plus 2 e I mean 2 m times e or v naught in that matter divided by h bar square times a square this is the transmission coefficient